uh, colleagues. So it's, the items are not new. They are actually um, uh, follow uh, up matters um, as, as it were. And then <clears throat> the, the second uh, main item is the consideration of um, uh, two or three sets of minutes um, that uh, remain uh, outstanding. Um, it's 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 one it's one set of minutes uh, minutes. Uh, all right. I muted myself. Yes. Oh, thanks. Welcome, sir. And and the annual report of of the committee. But there's another item um, which is the consideration of uh, a letter from the president uh, dated uh, 8 January uh, 2021. Now, let's, let's look at the uh, apologies. I'm not too sure if the minister has, has, has joined the meeting, but to hear who is uh, in the meeting uh, representing uh, the department. Let, let's, let's start with the apologies uh, from the committee side. Um, uh, yes, Pat, the apologies are three. They are from Ms. Mudise, Ms. Bartlett, and Ms. Leban. Um, all right, so those are the three. Uh, Modise, um, and, and who are the Bartlett, and 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 Miss Lebani, and Miss Miss Lebani, Lebani. All right, yeah. so it's it's a new member, eh? yes. All right, so those are the three uh, apologies uh, we've received um, on the committee side. Colleagues, are there any other apologies that you may be aware of? None. Uh, may I check uh, the representation from the department? Uh, who is here paid from the department? I haven't seen anyone yet, Che. You haven't seen anyone yet? No, not yet. Yeah, I don't see anyone uh, from the, the thing. And uh, could you kindly get one of your colleagues to call uh, the PLO, uh, Mr. Nkabinde, uh, to find out if the minister would be in the meeting uh, to present on the to present the letter of the president. Um, yeah, I would have prioritized it and may and, and push it up so that we she presents and take leave if 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 she is pressed for time. Okay, just please do that in the meantime. We'll be continuing with the, we'll carry on with our meeting. And Honorable uh, Chabeleng. Honorable Chabeleng. All right, yeah, I think we lost him again. Okay, I will continue with the meeting. And the, the agenda is as is presented. Can you flight it, um, uh, Pat? Chair, it's, uh, it's Philando Van Eisel speaking. Um, Pat asked me to share the screen today to assist her with the sharing of the documents. Um, but I, I, see, uh, I see that she's disabled the participant screen sharing. So I, uh, if she can hear this, she must just um, uh, allow other people to share screens. Otherwise, I won't be able to assist. Oh, is it? Oh, so has she left the meeting? No, I'm in the meeting. I'm in the meeting, Chair. And um, I'm uh, trying to see where has this gone wrong. Check. All right. <clears throat> okay. We we will not. Uh, uh, so in other words, you can't share. Uh, your screen can't share any document, even as. Uh, not at the stage, Chair. Uh, 
it has to be allowed from Pat's side, but I will see if I can find how that's done and assist there as well. Right. Um... <clears throat> So, uh, uh, Velem, you are saying, uh, who is the host? Uh, Pet is the host. Yes. Okay. Sarah, so if I can just ask Pet maybe to see at the bottom of her screen, there's an option that says share screen. There's a, an up arrow there somewhere. If you click on that, I think it uh, asks you who, who is allowed to share the screen and then you click on all participants. Um, I don't know if she sees an option like that, perhaps. I have clicked on all participants. Hi, Velem. Hi, uh, yes, uh, it's working now. Just give me a second to get the relevant document up and then okay. we're good to go. Okay, let me welcome all of your comments, uh, sorry, colleagues uh, to, to, to the meeting, my apologies. Um, the, this is the agenda of, of the meeting and uh, it's, it's consideration and adoption of the minutes of the 19th uh, November, 2020. It's a consideration of the letter from the president, uh, 8th January, 2021. A consideration and adoption of the committee um, uh, uh, program, uh, first term, um, and, and, the and the consideration and adoption of the committee's uh, annual uh, report. So those are the uh, items uh, for today. <clears throat> and uh, can we, uh, can I, we adopt this uh, program, uh, colleagues. Sorry, this agenda. Um, uh, this being the first uh, agenda prior to us adopting the the, the the first term program. So it requires us to approve it. Uh, can I get your concurrence? Yes, sir. Support. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Sir. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, all right, uh, it's, I saw Mafanya moving and uh, seconded by. Uh, Ms. Kosi, thank you so much. Uh, <clears throat> Ms. Kosi, you, you have uh, yes. a, a terrible problem with your, your um, network that side. Uh, please attend, attend to it. Um, you, you are breaking up. All right. <clears throat> okay. Not having, teacher. thank you so much, uh, Miss Kos. Right. Having said that, can we flight the minutes of nineteenth uh, November? Colleagues, uh, this is the the attendance uh, register. We were. It, it was a meeting uh, with the South African Unintegrated Forces United Front uh, to consideration and adoption of minutes of uh, 5th and uh, 12th of November uh, 2020 and three consideration and adoption of uh, reports on defense related industry uh, role players, uh, many uh, symposium and uh, the Lihuta with the DOD. All right, so this is the attendance. Uh, go to the attendance. Uh, colleagues, I present this uh, attendance record. Uh, continue. It continues. Uh, and then there is a consideration and adoption of the minutes. Um, all right, uh, the minutes were adopted. Consideration and adoption of the reports. The consolidated, consolidated uh, report on uh, engagements with the, the South African defense uh, industry role players from July to July 2019 to 5th November 2020 was adopted. 
and uh, and then there's another one item there a report on the and on the medical uh, symposium yeah, you can move down right and uh, report on the jcd Lihusa. and that lead, it was a number three was presentation by the sa unintegrated forces united uh, front go down And then uh, fourth is the observations uh, by the committee and fifth uh, recommendations uh, by the GSD and the adjournment. Colleagues, um, uh, can I, is there any corrections that you may want to, to have uh, effected? Uh, okay, it doesn't look like there's uh, the, the, uh, corrections. Colleagues, can we move and, uh, yeah. and so move move by Miss Kosi? Yes, Miss Kosi. Yeah, before before we move for the adoption of the minutes, I just want to make some corrections on the one point six adjournment. Um, the Mr. Kaba concluded the meeting by stating that he thought, I think it, it was he said he thought, he do, and said, mm -hmm. I don't know, he thought it's proper to deal with the, the outstanding uh, reports and minutes at the last uh, formal meeting. Okay. Yes, no, the, no, thank you so much. Um, can I expect that uh, picnic typo, typo uh, uh, typographical? Can I request uh, that after the correction, we adopt them? Thank you so much. Okay, thank you so much. Any second? I second. Uh, Miss, uh, because uh, seconds the uh, the adoption. Uh, can you uh, quickly move to the second item? The second item was the, the letter of the president from the president there. Eh? Uh, suspect? Yes. All right. So this is the letter from the president. Uh, it doesn't look like the minister is in the meeting um, to, to present it. Um, colleagues, um, we can deal with it. Um, are there any comments, uh, colleagues? Uh, the deployment uh, terminated on the 31st of January uh, 2021. It was for uh, just one month uh, because it ran from December 29 um, to December uh, 31. Um, the projected uh, expenditure was 95.5 million rand. Let me say 95.6 million rand. Um, so this is the, the 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 presentation. So colleagues, are there any uh, comments to make on on this? Uh, Mr. Ryder, uh, followed by Malia Keshelembe. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Chair, I find it highly problematic that we're dealing with this matter today. Um, as, as you've pointed out, the, uh, the, the, the time period that it covers has already ended. So we're being called in to rubber stamp something. Uh, which, which is massively problematic. That's not what the Joint Standing Com Committee on Defense is there to do. We're not a rubber stamping mechanism. Now, Chair, I've got the Constitution in front of me, and I'm going to read the wording to you. Uh, paragraph 201.4 of the Constitution says, if Parliament does not sit during the first seven days after the Defense Force is envisaged, in subsection two, 
the president must provide information, the information required in subsection three to the appropriate oversight committee. That ends the quote, Chair. So what it's implying is that it says, if parliament doesn't sit within seven days after the employment, then the committee must be notified. Chair, that indicates that there's an urgency to us sitting and deliberating uh, around these letters and the, the, the issuing of these letters. For us to come and sit at the end of the process, when it's a fait accompli, it makes us a laughing stock. It actually means that the work of this committee is, 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 is pointless. You know, there's nothing to stop this committee being called. Uh, it, it's one of the reasons why we, 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 we are different from other committees. We can be called at any time um, even if there's recess on, and we can sit and deliberate and discuss uh, matters exactly like this. But for us to wait for the next ordinary meeting of the committee, which is happening after the event has passed, to rubber stamp something, Chair, this is not acceptable. And the next time, and God forbid this happens again, that we deploy uh, the Defence Force in, within our borders um, um, and, and not be notified. But the next time that, that the president issues one of these letters, Chair, let's meet urgently, please. Let's call a special meeting of this committee because that's what the constitution envisions. If, the, if parliament can't sit within seven days, then let the committee sit. And that implies that the committee should sit at short notice. Chair, really, I mean, we, we, we can't waste our time rubber stamping this tonight. Thank you. Right, uh, uh, point uh, taken uh, and then Mafanya and then Mr. Murray in that order. Shelembe, Mafanya and Mr. Murray. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Uh, and greetings to my colleagues there. Uh, Chairperson, um, I'm trying, I mean, uh, to understand, maybe I'll be assisted in this committee, that uh, as a committee, we are just uh, told that uh, so much will be spent uh, for that purpose, but we do not get, uh, say, a detailed report or something saying that so much will, will be spent on one, two, three, four, five. Now, if you look, Chairperson, say we are told that uh, 2,122 uh, uh, soldiers were deployed. That's fine. And we are told at the same time that 95 million rand will be spent. Okay, it's fine. But the question is how can we as a committee can get, I mean, that? can get the information that will convince us that 95 million so there's, uh, 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 and dried fruit. Uh, can you meet, uh, can you meet the coach? Uh, 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 <laughs> can you meet him, please? Uh, Shabeleng, you, we can hear your discussion. Okay, you may continue, um, uh, Mr. Lem, apologies for this. Yes, yeah. Chairperson, I'm trying now to understand now how can we as a committee be able to see that, I mean, uh, 95 million that uh, was um, budgeted for the 2,122 uh, soldiers for a period of one month. I mean, that... Uh, there is nothing that is going wrong or corruption whatsoever. I'm saying this, a uh, chairperson, maybe. Maybe that information can help all of us. They said 2,000 soldiers and they say 500, 500 million. For me to say, okay, oh, 500 million was just for the deployment, but I don't know exactly what will be uh, the money, I mean, uh, I mean, utilize and the purposes to see to it that maybe after the period, the money was uh, utilized accordingly. And also, I mean, a uh, chairperson, uh, 
if I mean uh, one uh, may ask, may ask just uh, to me as a member of the committee, uh, Shalem, you are a member of the committee. We have heard that uh, so much has been spent. What was being done with that money is not enough to say deployment uh, of uh, soldiers to me. So that is why I'm requesting a uh, chairperson that if there is any possibility that uh, after, I mean, the deployment, we are giving the report to say so much uh, was spent. For now, it is very, very difficult for us now to say it's fine to that letter, whereas we do not have the full details of what, I mean, uh, was happening. And also also to, 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 to support my colleague. You know, I mean, after 30 days getting the information to say yes to it, it bec becomes difficult because we do not know exactly what is happening, what happened, how was the money utilized, is there any money left? The last question, Chairperson, that I may ask if uh, someone can help. From whose budget is it the 95 million rand comes from the department of the, 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 the DOD or it comes from uh, the, 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 the budget of the president? I would be happy maybe if I can be giving clarity on those uh, questions. Thank you, Chairperson. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Mafanya. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. I, I share the same sentiments with both uh, Honorable Ryder and uh, Shalem. The, the, the question that will also put us more into a bad light is that we have more questions than answers because none of us in the committee will be able to answer for the, for the, for the minister, not the deputy minister. My, my, my advice to, to, or my opinion is that uh, we should refer back the letter back to the, uh, to the minister so that uh, she comes back to account for what transpired. So that even when we, inter we interrogate the report, we're able to know that uh, a lot has been said by, by the minister or she is accountable for what happened at that time. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, and thank you so much, Mr. Mafanya. Mr. Mare. Uh, thank you, Chair, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I share this. I share the sentiments um, because it feels like we were just a rubber stamp. So, I mean, by this time that we are considering the letter, we know that the soldiers are back in the base because it's the 31st of, of, of December. That was the end of that deployment period. So we're actually considering this after the period is finished. And that's not the idea of the section 201, 3 and 4, most certainly. And I think the constitution when they say inform parliament, we know what it means. Like uh, the state departments must also inform parliament of annual reports and all those kind of things. So it means that you actually must submit it for us for consideration. Um, I understand that, uh, you know, section four says that if parliament's not in setting, then, you know, then the president must do my, but, and then he must, you know, you know, communicate with us in that. The one thing that I've picked up, the letter from the president is dated the 8th of January. The deployment was done on the 29th of, 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 of December. So that's not even seven days after the deployment. So, so uh, he's actually informed Parliament uh, nine, ten days after the deployment, which is, which is not according to the Constitution. Um, and, 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 and that is a concern. I mean, you know, it, it's like, you, re, you remember last year, the second, when he, when he uh, approved the 73, 75,000 soldiers for deployment, we know that that was a joke. It was never going to be. Um, and, and, it, and it was like, uh, you know, people in, who has ever decided and, and, and advised the president, it seems like they're not serious about this thing. And they, they, they're taking us for granted. And that's not the idea of the constitutional mandate that we have got. And the, and the constitutional uh, accountability and responsibility that is on the president. I know that if you read the constitution alone, it doesn't say that he has to explain the budget to us. But in terms of our oversight responsibility and accountability, we must eventually decide on, on, uh, on, on the acceptability and how the, you know, this must be funded. Remember, there's no additional funding that is coming in. And you will remember even in, in some of the meetings that we've had with stakeholders, um, you know, that, that uh, conference that we've had, 
there was people that said that, you know, somewhere along the line, the defense force would have to tell the president, sorry, president, we cannot do this. Whilst currently the view is whatever the president says, we will do it, irrespective of whether we've got the money or the resources, we will do it because we are, we are in, instructed to do that. So we have to think very carefully. I know that we, I mean, we cannot change this now because it's anyway done. It's re, anyway in retrospective. But we will have to communicate with both the minister and the president because it's the president that informs us. So it might not be, you know, the fault of the minister, but, it, but it's certainly from the presidency. Whether it's the president himself, whether it's his staff or advisors, that we don't know. But, I mean, we cannot sit with this situation. I can tell you, uh, Chairperson, I remember we, we spoke the other day and we said, you know, there's no indication that there will be a further deployment. I know, for instance, the, the soldiers in the bases are now basically sitting and waiting because they know the police wants the soldiers to be re-employed. Um, and, 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 you know, if, if we are going to find this, the second one now, only somewhere at the late uh, end of February, I mean, it makes a joke out of it. And, uh, and we will have to show that we are serious about this, not that we are uh, a spoke in the wheel uh, or, or that we are a stumbling block, but we are there for a specific purpose and the Constitution and our oath of office um, and, and, and some various legislation prescribe how we must act in this way. And this way, we cannot act responsibly and accountability. And, and again, I want to refer people, and I'm not paranoid about this. Uh, I mean, we have to communicate this, but, but you remember what happened in Zondo Commission the past week, where Judge Zondo, Zondo was very, very critical of Parliament's role and that members of Parliament do not comply with the Constitution and their oath of office. I think we have done pretty well as a, as a portfolio committee and a joint standing committee on defense. And uh, I think we have got a proud record. And, uh, uh, you know, we, we, we cooperate with the president and, and, and not, you know, oppose him. But, but somewhere along the line, you know, we, we must just communicate um, very cordially and basically, you know, give him all these anomalies that we find um, and, and that we ask him to please, you know, take us into consideration. I just want to say about the budget, although it is not in the Constitution, but it's an oversight responsibility of us. And when, when the Defence Force provide the amount of money to the President, we know generally there must be a breakdown of how they intend to allocate, or not, or not intend to spend, but how they budget and break down this budget for various items. So there is a budget. They, they should communicate to us, and they must also communicate to us on how they will fund that. My concern is they will take away from operations, they will take away from equipment and maintenance, and you know they will be in the streets doing the work of the police that the police is supposed to, to be doing. Uh, and that's not fair on the defense force. And eventually people will say, ah, we've got a, a joke of a defense force. We can't even protect the, the people. And then it's because of things like this. But that's my input. Um, but I think, yeah, this is in retrospect. So uh, there's actually nothing that we can do at this stage about that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much, Mr. Mare, Mr. Mutle. Yeah, th thank you, Chair. And uh, good uh, evening to uh, members of the committee. Chair. Uh, I had the deliberation and I also wish to make an input because uh, my, my understanding or interpretation of uh, section 201, uh, it compels the president to inform parliament promptly uh, in appropriate details of uh, giving the reason for the employment, uh, the place where the force will be employed, a number of people that will be involved, the period and the period that they will be employed uh, at that particular uh, place or area. And I think that has been done. The only challenge that we are seated with now is that uh, 
we could not be uh, the message the the, the this uh, committee agently to acknowledge uh, this particular letter on on time and i agree that we are dealing with it in retrospect but be that as it may uh, I, I i propose that we note the letter and there is nothing that stops this uh, joint standing committee nor the portfolio committee from playing oversight because the letter does not seek approval of how the funds should be used uh, neither that does it seek appro approval uh, from us to say you must not deploy this x number you must deploy y number you must not use this amount you must use that amount our role is for us to note after noting we've got a constitutional obligation to play oversight to ensure that uh, that which the president has stated in that letter has happened and monies that have been appropriate have been spent accordingly uh, there is no irregularity there is no element of uh, corruption that is happening out of those uh, allocated funds, so forth and, and, and so on. Even if we are noting in retrospect, that does not take away our responsibility to play oversight. And unfortunately, in this meeting, Chair, uh, the ministry is not uh, available. Therefore, the questions that we might... Uh, have or raise uh, they will not be addressed in this in this meeting uh, i therefore propose that we must uh, uh, note these questions and maybe request the minister to come and explain or respond to all these questions that have been raised there uh, uh, but that does not stop us in any way from playing our oversight and we should do so without any fear or favor thank you chair uh, th thank you so much, um, uh, Mr. Mutle, for that. Uh, I, I don't see any other hand. Uh, I'm not sure. Scorsi? Be mine, maybe. Scorsi? Yeah, yes. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, Professor. Let me also align myself with the latter speaker by saying that uh, let us take note of the letter that is sent by the Office of the President and whatever questions maybe that we are having now. Um, or request maybe the office of the president to come maybe in our next meeting so that we can raise those questions. But let us not so let's note the letter support the letter speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Alec, are you speaking on, on this item? Co chair? I know chair, I was just saying that uh, no, I, I, no, I I missed it a lot because some um, I see, I see. Okay. Because of but uh, if the minister is not the ministry is not them, we can send them the question and they can answer them in writing. Nothing stops us from doing that. And we can engage with those questions. When the next meeting come, if there are further questions, I think they could answer them there. So I right. just that if they are not there, we give them the question that they will answer them in writing. Thanks. Thanks, Koche, uh, um, for that. Colleagues, I think we must not be too hard on ourselves. Um, the letter was, um, the deployment took place on the 20, from the 29th of December uh, to the 31st of uh, January, and we were all on recess. All on recess. Um, we had all, when the deployment uh, uh, took place, we had all retired to our villages and uh, there was no one around. Um, so we must not be too hard on ourselves. Um, uh, but I agree with the comment that um, um, 
this as soon as we were all back, uh, this should have been uh, we should have convened an urgent uh, meeting. But already the period has expired. I mean, we only came back when was it this week? We only came back this week. So this week was the the first of uh, uh, February, all right. So already the the period has expired. It expired on the thirty first of uh, of January. But you can advise how we must deal with this um, in, 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 in future. Um, if you say to me, colleagues, it doesn't matter uh, wherever we are, we will come. Uh, recess or no recess will come. And um, I will take that as a mandate uh, that is given to me by this committee and uh, to, to do. So uh, please, on that one, I thought I should just uh, uh, put that that I couldn't act outside the the without you giving me authority to convene a meeting um, uh, outside the 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 the, um, the normal uh, working days. All right, but I note I note the point. Um, if that is a decision of the committee that it doesn't matter, please convene us. I will, I will do it, and then. The, the next point is uh, on the expenditure uh, against the, the allocation um, uh, following the deployment. Uh, I think uh, we, we have already received uh, an expenditure report uh, on the first uh, deployment. Um, I think it's one deployment and, uh, and the deployment uh, up until the 30th of, uh, I think the end of uh, 31st of, of August. That information was furnished to us uh, yesterday by the Auditor General. It's been audited. I'm sure you are talking about the audited information because there's just no way we can interact with an information that is not um, uh, audited. Um, uh, you, uh, and conclude on it. Yes, we can, uh, you know, uh, get it as a, as a, as as, as uh, um, you know uh, information, but it becomes credible once it's been audited by the Auditor General. So, if you want to us to, but again, nothing calls us, uh, nothing stops us from uh, calling, uh, you know, a, a report from 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 the 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 department we deal with their expenditure on a quarterly basis if you want to change that to be on a monthly basis we can deal with it and the uh, colleagues uh, is up to you and then the next point uh, is the point that uh, uh, mr mutle raised i'll skip a bit uh, mr mafanya's point um, this matter is not the first time uh, it is being raised um, you were favored with the legal opinion that was drafted uh, in June uh, 2003 uh, by advocate, by the two advocates, advocate Vassen and uh, advocate uh, Jenkins. Uh, those were the parliamentary legal uh, advisors. And uh, they were addressing the same issue that uh, colleagues are raising. Um, uh, the, the, the question is, they were requested to comment on the time period within which the president must inform parliament after authorizing the employment of the defense force uh, in fulfillment of uh, an international obligation, or I would, I would imagine any obligation in this matter, because in this case, we're dealing with uh, uh, an internal deployment. And uh, subsequently, uh, we were requested to verbally to advise whether such employment would result if in any unauthorized expenditure if parliament were not timely, timely informed. The conclusion, co uh, colleagues, uh, was exactly the way uh, Tabo uh, Mutle explained it. And uh, is paragraph nine is conclusion. In summary, section 201, subsection three, requires the president, after having authorized the deployment of the defense force 
inter, inter alia uh, in fulfilling an international obligation to inform parliament without unreasonable delay, yeah, without unreasonable delay. So in other words, they, they, they interpreted promptly and uh, in appropriate detail to mean without uh, unreasonable delay. If the notice was not submitted in time, this fact alone would not render the expenditure unauthorized. I think that was the conclusion of, of, of the team. The question we are facing is whether there was any unreasonable delay in, the, in, the, in, in informing uh, parliament. And um, currently, right now, we don't have sufficient information uh, to make a conclusion uh, that uh, his, the president's um, uh, action in this case um, was delayed uh, uh, you know, uh, unreasonably. So I, 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 maybe the minister would uh, inform us uh, when we meet, perhaps it's one question that we must send to, to the minister. And uh, why, when the deployment uh, occurred on the 29th of, uh, of, of, of December, the parliament was informed on the, on the, on the, on the 9th of, uh, 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 January. You will recall, colleagues, in between there were holidays. Um, again, it's, 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 it's not like we were dealing with a normal uh, situation. Uh, there were holidays, and um, the seven days or nine days do we take into account that there was January 1, uh, there was January 2, those being the holidays. January, is January 2 a holiday? I can't remember. But I'm saying, we, there was 31st and uh, you know there were there, it was that period of, of the year uh, you know in other words there were holidays uh, in between uh, in addition to the weekends uh, does the seven days day period take that into account if it does then the 9th of uh, January would not be uh, uh, would still be within the seven day period if the seven days is a seven seven working days so I'm saying um, I'm not a legal advisor. I'm not no, even. It cannot, it cannot be. It cannot be chair. Come, come again. Uh, I say I say that cannot be because the soldiers are deployed seven days a week and not only five days a week. So, no, 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 uh, no, 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 no. I'm I'm talking about the I'm talking about the days. Uh, I, I understand. I understand. But what yeah. I'm saying is that the the soldiers are not only deployed from a Monday to a Friday, they are also deployed on a Saturday and Sunday. So you have to you have to take into consideration the no, days. No, 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 no. That's not that's not, that's not how you interpret days, uh, uh, Mr. Mare. You 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 interpret days either you include holidays and the weekends, or you interpret days um, uh, without uh, the weekends right. and, uh, and, uh, and 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 the holidays. So right. I don't know in this case what okay. is the situation. Okay. Yeah, so, so I thought just that's just a legal uh, interpretation of days. That's number one. And number two, and uh, it's, it's, it's not, it's promptly, it's, it's, it's not that the president must, re must report within seven days. I think uh, it says must inform parliament promptly. I think Tabo was right. That seven days is when the parliament is not in session, then he must inform, he must inform the committee. But that information of the of the committee must happen promptly, and the legal advisor interpreted promptly to mean without unreasonable uh, delay. I thought I should just uh, clarify that. And um, if you want to take it, uh, uh, get other people to uh, give us more information. Let's let's give let's provide questions and we'll, we'll send we we'll send them to to them. And uh, and and Mafanya says. Uh, we referred the matter back. I think we've started discussing the matter. And uh, let's, let's check if we have any problem at, uh, at, uh, accepting the deployment, uh, you know, in terms of the letter, uh, but obviously it's post facto, I accept that. And, um, or we abandon the discussion and uh, you know, deferred to the time when the minister is present, but I don't see how will that help us. You know, 
uh, to be honest, I don't see how, what value will that add to, to the whole process? What is it that we will do when the minister is present that we cannot do today? What is it that we would say when the minister is present that we cannot say today? Please, um, that's, 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 that's my point. And, uh, but the co-chair said, if there are any questions, let's, let's formulate the questions and then send them to the minister. Do we agree with that? Yes, Chair, we agree. Agree. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Yeah, before we agree, I think there is a hanging question uh, because I don't think uh, Honorable uh, Mare was answered because if the committee is not aware how many days they must be informed, it means now there is no need for us to consider any days that will be given. Because if they say seven days, we don't know. But Chairperson, if maybe you can get the clarity, how many days we should be informed by, as a committee, I think we'll be happy on that. But if we are not told, so there will be no need, I mean, uh, for us to comment because there is, they, they, there is no date promptly to us, it means nothing. There is no date. So maybe yes. Chairperson, I'll it, agree it, with it, you. It, with it that means time. within a reasonable time, you, you, you are right, uh, Mr. Shalem. There's, yes. there, there, there's, well, it, the president is not tied down to a, a specific date. Sorry. Yes, sir. I'm listening. So, Mr. President, I don't know. There was such a small cut off here. I don't know what this network or what. You were explaining something. No, no. I was actually saying that you you are right. And um, it, it, the, the, the president is not tied down to a, a specific date uh, following the deployment, but it says he must inform parliament promptly and promptly has been interpreted to mean within a reasonable time or without any unreasonable delay. So that's, that's a point. Maybe we, I don't know how we want us to deal with this, uh, Shalem, but do you want to make a suggestion? Yeah. Chairperson, for us as the committee, I think maybe if you say parliament, so what about us as a portfolio committee, when do we need to be informed? That's why I was happy when, when you said you will have to check out, I mean, when it comes to the issue of seven days, what is happening as a committee, when should we be informed? Otherwise, uh, Chairperson, uh, even if maybe we are informed in the middle of the year, we can't complain because there's no specific time that is mentioned uh, for us to be informed. That is my concern, Chairperson. Okay. Colleagues, I will forward to you uh, this legal opinion. I did uh, send it to you uh, previously to look at it. And if you still need further uh, legal opinion of it, please indicate. Um, I was actually reading from the, uh, the documents that uh, uh, this committee uh, was, securely, was shared with the committee members. So let's let's leave it at that. Uh, do you agree that I will send this uh, legal opinion that's, to you? That's a sec just for a second, Chair. Yes, yes uh, Ms. Just McCoy. for a second. You, you know, the conspicuous absence of both the minister and the deputy, deputy minister in the committees, really, it, it leaves so many questions. So that is why we are debating matters that could have been dealt with when they were here. Uh, because now, if we agree that uh, there, there won't be any difference whether they are here or not, so what will be the, the reason for them not being absent forever? So all that we are saying is it is easy for them to account for some of the questions that we have. Uh, not that they have a superior logic, but because they are, they account to us as well. So I understand the letter from the president, but equally the minister should have had some involvement in the letter, in the drafting of the letter or whatever that is the information that we get. So the conspicuous absence that of both the minister and the deputy minister leaves much to be desired. Thank you. Okay, so uh, let's let's note what uh, Mr. Mafanya is, is saying, um, uh, colleagues. And uh, what do I do, colleagues? Um, I, I I I I've just explained it. We have just discussed it, but I don't see uh, there was a proposal. I have not had any objection to it. That. Um, uh, if there are any questions uh, that we think need to be brought to the attention of the minister, um, we uh, let's, let's spell them out so that when we meet next, the first thing that the minister does is to respond to the questions, or probably not wait for for her to for for a meeting. We can ask her to 
respond in writing. What, what, what are we saying, colleagues? Chairperson, yes, um, I think we must be pragmatic. And, and as we have said, um, there's basically nothing that we can do other than, than accept this. However, in terms of our the first resolution that we took is that uh, mandate that we've given you, uh, that you must respond back to them and say, you know, we will meet whenever, especially in terms of virtual, sure. whenever it is required. So, so that's the first point. And then secondly, um, I think we must communicate with both the minister and the president or to the president via the minister. Uh, you know, we must look at, you must look at the protocol um, and then just explain to them our position from an oversight point of view um, and that we are not obstructive but that we only want to do our work and that, you know, their cooperation in this regard would be much appreciated um, because eventually we sit with a problem and we must explain it. And we must, we must basically, you know, pr you know, protect everybody in, in this regard. So, so we will have to work as a team and, and the president must just, you know, um, take, a, take us early enough into his, in, into his confidence. Remember, remember, we must just remember if parliament sits, that section 2013 two, um, two basically implies that it must be within seven days. So if, if we can be informed when we are in session within seven days, because subsection three says, or the sub, next subsection says that if we are not in session, then he must inform parliament within seven days after that. So, so that implies that, you know, normally, when we are in session, he must inform us within seven days. And that's not unreasonable on them because it's protocol and it's, it, it is discipline and all those kind of things. And it obviously put us in a position where we can work together and there's no, no quarrels and, 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 and issues afterwards. So, so I think, you know, we, we unfortunately have got no um, other alternative but to accept this. Um, although we do it, you know, not under the race, but I mean, just in terms of we've got a qualified acceptance and, and that we just qualify that, that, uh, that basically ratification that we have to do. Um, and I think that's what we have to do. And, and you know, because we can, we can discuss it the whole evening and we will not get further because it has already been done. Uh, and especially now that the soldiers are waiting and see whether he will adhere to the police's request. Um, you know, he, he must again, you know, if it happens, he must inform us promptly okay. because we are now in All session. Right. All right, um, <clears throat> colleagues, I will convey the sentiment of the committee. One that um, whenever a, a decision is taken in terms of this section, uh, section um, 201, uh, um, yeah, uh, yeah. In section two hundred one two, and uh, section two hundred one three, uh, the, the, the we understand promptly to mean um, within the reasonable time, and the reasonable time, in our understanding, is uh, okay. not just as quickly as possible, but is within seven days. And uh, yes, sorry, I have a different opinion. Come again. I have a Is different opinion. Okay, may I speak? Yes, you can talk, you can speak, uh, Mr. Ryder. Chair, Chair, I think that, you know, I disagree with your legal opinion. And uh, there's a famous quote that if you get seven lawyers around a table and ask them for an opinion, you'll get seven different opinions. Um, so let, 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 me, let me put it in context. The Constitution says... Uh, when the Defence Force is employed for any purpose, mentioned, blah, 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 the President must inform Parliament promptly. So if we take a dictionary, Chair, and, and I don't know if you noticed, I got up and grabbed my dictionary off the shelf. <laughs> it's an, okay? And okay. the dictionary defines promptly as immediately, swiftly, without delay. Okay? So if you read that, if you read promptly as swiftly and without delay, in context, because then the Constitution goes on to say, if Parliament does not sit within the first seven days after the Defence Force is employed. In other words, the President doesn't have seven days to inform us. The President must inform us without delay, promptly, like now, okay? As he does it, he must, he, he, he must tell, us, tell Parliament, and then Parliament has got seven days. If they don't sit within that seven days, that's when the committee sits. 
So That's right. I, I, I don't believe that we should just be rolling over. We've got an oversight to play. Otherwise, we wouldn't have this, this, this in, in the Constitution. I object to the fact that we're just noting this. And, and, and I think we, we should make a fuss of this, Jay. Thank you. No, uh, Mr. Ryder, I, will, I will convey the, uh, the interpretation of uh, the committee um, uh, to the minister to say that um, I think you are right, it's without delay uh, and, and uh, it must be within the reasonable time and that the committee wishes that it be so. Uh, but I said earlier on, we must take into account that there were uh, holidays in between, all right? So, but I'm, I'm not the one who must uh, give reasons why it could not happen before uh, the 9th of, of January. The minister will explain that when we meet with them. I think we have, we have, settled, we have settled that. And uh, I was just saying you must take note of, 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 of the holidays in between this one. And two, we have agreed that whenever, uh, you know, I receive a, a, a notice of this nature, a letter of the, uh, informing us of the deployment, mm -hmm. I have a mandate uh, to call members back from recess to consider uh, the letter of the president. I think that has been cleared. I can, we can now move forward um, on, on those process. The colleagues, um, so the, the, you, 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 you will have no, if, if, let's assume we're discussing this thing within time. Would you have any objection with the deployment? Would you have had a, a, an objection with it uh, to the deployment? No. Mr. Mafanya, no. Elec, no. It doesn't look like uh, there's anyone amongst us who would have had any objection to the deployment. With that, we will then close the discussion uh, on, on the matter. And, uh, and, and that we're not recommending. Uh, uh, yeah, and that... Uh, we accept, uh, we note the reasons for the deployment and uh, that the deployment was, um, you know, uh, uh, it was an attempt to, um, you know, what was, 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 was part of the government's response to the uh, uh, pa uh, pandemic, you know, and, uh, 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 and that we accept it. Agreed, colleagues? Agreed. Thank you, there's no objection to it. All right, colleagues, can we move to the next uh, item? Uh, the next item, colleagues, is the, the program of the committee, um, uh, the fourth term program. Uh, can you flight it, uh, uh, Pat? Uh, Mr. Van Rensburg? Colleagues, this is the program of, of the committee that um, we, we need to consider and adopt uh, today. Um, it, it's this week where it's, it's the fourth and we're considering all those matters uh, uh, highlighted um, um, there. And uh, on the 11th, on the 11th, uh, next week Thursday is SONA. And then the next Thursday, remember we meet um, uh, on 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 the Thursday. Uh, the following Thursday on the on the 18th, it's a briefing by the NCACC on the 2023rd and fourth quarterly reports. And then on the 24th uh, is the budget. Uh, and then on the 19th, uh, there's a planned uh, strategic workshop. Um, of the of both uh, committees, nineteenth uh, uh, that's Friday and Saturday, and um, and then on the twenty fifth is the discussion on the consolidated report on the engagement with the South African defence industry role players and the adoption of the minutes, and then scroll down, and then on the second to the fourth is the NSOP strategic planning session. Uh, so the colleagues will not be available. Uh, on the 11th uh, is a follow-up meeting with the Defense Industry Council, AMSCO and DINEL on progress and challenges. On the 18th is the briefing by the Reserve Force Council uh, on the updated uh, Reserve uh, Force Service uh, Systems 
and other pertinent uh, reserve force matters. And then on the third, we start the constituency uh, period. And the, let's go up, uh, let's go back. Um, uh, per, uh, uh, all right, colleagues. Uh, next week, I'm not, not that other week on the on the on the 18th. I want us to drop the fourth and uh, the fourth quarterly uh, report. Um, I'm told it's, it's ready, and the annual rate, the annual report is also ready. But it 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 um, it's these two are yet to serve before the NCACC uh, committee. And the, the NCACC committee will sit on the 25th of, uh, of February. It means that we can only interact with the fourth uh, quarterly report together with the annual report and uh, after the 25th of February. What is now available uh, that I can confirm is available, signed off, it's waiting to be tabled in parliament, is the third quarterly, is a third quarterly report. And uh, so we will then amend our, our, our program uh, to reflect that. In other words, we, we stay with the third quarterly report and move the fourth quarter to later, uh, after the 25th of, uh, of, of February, uh, when we'll take it together with the annual report. Colleagues, uh, do we agree with this? Anything that you may want to add uh, or subvert? Yes, Mr. 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 Just, just from my side, um, I've got no problem with the, with the, with the agenda points on, uh, on the program. The one thing that, that we have discussed yesterday and even in the run-up to yesterday was the whole thing about, about defense intelligence and the SDA. Now, I am very much aware that we are not allowed to get the information. What I think I've shared in the past is my concern and with no disrespect to our colleagues in, in the Joint Standing Committee on Defense, uh, they do not have the priorities and the focus that we have got uh, on the budgets. And they have to have oversight over the defense intelligence budget and SDA basically on behalf of parliament, although it's part of our budget. We have never had an interaction with JC, the Joint Standing Committee on Defense. And obviously, we don't expect from them to share things with us that they are not allowed to. But it will give an opportunity for them maybe to understand where we are coming from and what our priorities is and what our concern is in terms of, in terms of budgets and oversight. That they can then go and hear what we are saying and they can apply their minds, um, and at least they can then do oversight, and if then so, report it to Parliament or to the Auditor General or whatever uh, way there is, but that we at least know, because currently, my, my personal perception is they don't know what, what, we, what is important for us, so they take it for granted, and they basically is a rubber stamp, and they go on, because they don't know. So that is just an idea and a suggestion from my side, um, and we can even do that like on the, on the 18th when, uh, you know, now that we don't have the fourth quarter in the annual report of the NCACC, that we can maybe have an hour or an hour and a half, you know, um, meeting with them. So, so that, that is just a suggestion. See, what, what the, what, just help me understand, what, what, what will be the point of meeting with them when they are not going to share us the information that... Uh, they are privy well, to. Well, um, at least, at least you know, what, they will, they, what, uh, what they will know. At least what they will know is what to look for and to do proper oversight. Currently, what do they look for? They have got no idea what to look for because they don't know even know what what our vision is and what our concerns are. So that it's it's a, it's an it's a session that we can tell them how we feel and that you know our message to them to do oversight, basically on our way off. All right, Tabo, is your hand up? Mr. Mutle? Not up, I think that was the last time, sorry, Chair. That was the last time. I, I, I hear you, uh, but look, let, 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 let us be pragmatic, uh, Mr. Mare. Let, let's first look at whether we do have issues that you want to share with them. I, I hear you. I hear you. 
And uh, what are these issues? Uh, let's spell them out. And, um, and if we agree in this committee that these are the issues that um, we, we can have a joint meeting with uh, the Joint Standing Co Committee on Defense without encroaching into yeah. their terrain, yeah. right? And um, it, it, you know, I, I would have no problem because nothing stops com uh, in committees yeah. to hold the joint um, you know, yeah. uh, portfolio committee meetings. All right, but that depends on the issues yeah. that yeah. Uh, have to be transacted in those joint meetings. All right, well, without I, encroaching I, I, in each yeah. other's terrain. Absolutely, right? but just, just taking from the Auditor General's report yesterday, where they report on the SDA uh, and the difficulties, and we have expressed our concern about the SDA. A no, 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 no. Let, 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 no, no. Let's, let's not have a general discussion, okay, Mr. Mare. Mr. Mare, yes. let's not just have a general discussion and say we're going to meet on the SDA. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. And no, still no. Are, say, because yeah. we'll end up you know, encroaching into, into their terrain, yeah. right? No, let's no. look at the issues in, the, in okay. this meeting, decide uh, at the next meeting or whatever meeting, yeah. but the meeting okay. of this committee, decide what issues that okay. we want to place on the agenda okay. of, the, uh, of the joint uh, committee okay. meeting without okay. encroaching okay. into each other's terrain. No All right. Problem. So let's no let's problem. look at the issues. Uh, uh, yeah. Let's not just say no, yeah. shut the door to them yeah. when we have okay. not looked at the, the okay. substance of the met. That's the substance okay. and then the process. Okay, All right? no problem. So for no now problem. we, we so thank you so much. For now we have these issues. Uh, can I get your concurrence? Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Any objection? No objection. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, colleagues. Can we then quickly go to the last uh, meeting uh, item on the agenda? Right. Um, uh, who's, who's going to take us? Is it uh, Peter or or you, Velem? Ache. A good evening. Yes, Peter. Good evening, Chair. Yes, Peter. Uh, welcome. Uh, can, can I take the members through the uh, annual report of the Joint Standing Committee on Defence? Please do. William, can you enlarge it, please? Uh, Chair, uh, members, I think the first thing to note is that the annual report of the PC will also be discussed um, at the strategic session. Um, so many of these things that we're going to mention now um, will then also be discussed because there's a lot of overlap between uh, the two committees. Um, Chair, uh, you would excuse me because this report is uh, very uh, cumbersome in the sense that it repeats itself on several issues. Um, so the first section there is just basically the key highlights um, of what the committee has done during the January to December 2020 uh, period. Can you enlarge, William? Has this gone off? Uh, so, Chair, there we are just saying what are some of the objectives that we had and some of the objectives that we have achieved. Uh, the day on A1, there we just talk about the letters from the, the President. And Chair will note, um, there we had about uh, five different letters um, that we've uh, looked at. Um, the second issue is that we've covered various uh, reports from the NCACC, uh, both um, the quarterly report as well as the annual reports. And Chair and members will also remember uh, that we also had a discussion on the defense industry and all players and where they also made their inputs. Um, then the point three there is just the Lakhotla that we had um, with the Department of Defense, uh, specifically around the force structure and the force design, and then the mini symposium um, experts, um, also related to the compensation of employees in the department and in the various 
suggestions they've made to us. There's point five at the meeting that I've referred to that the NCACC also took place uh, or also took part in engagement with ENDIC, that's a National Defense Industry Council, as well as SADI. So on point four, now I think it's, it's point six on the next page, is just the joint oversight that we've undertook um, last year, at the end of last year, um, to a one military hospital, Valmont style, and then the three border areas. I'm um, sure so section B is just an, uh, the focus areas of the uh, committee uh, during the first uh, uh, or last year. And there one can see um, the first uh, area is this, the importance there uh, of the National uh, Military Veterans Database, the deployment uh, in support of the uh, SAPs, uh, the consideration of the NCACC reports, engagements with the defense industry, and then specifically the Nellan Arms Corps with regards to Project Ufaster Hotel and Biro, and then engagement with the Defense Force Service Commissions on the mandate, challenges and achievements, and then the Lakotla that we were talking about, and then also the engagement with Saudi. Um, on the next page here, we'll look at the key focus uh, areas for future work, and then the one thing that we have to follow up is whether the Defense Force Service Commission has actually launched their website, uh, because as you rightly said, the uh, Public Service Commission has a website and is accessible to everybody. And uh, we thought that it was right that the Defense Force Service Commission should also have a website that soldiers then can access, where they can also look at the various issues with regards to the conditions of service. The second one is just the finalization of the military veterans database. Um, and the next one is uh, the contract management with regards to the projects uh, Ufaster and so forth. I remember Mr. Mare was talking about that, that if we do cancel, for instance, Project Ufaster, we will incur a lot of penalties and uh, that the Department, the uh, Arms Corps and the NEL, as well as National Treaty, will have to look at as to whether we can actually then revive or extend the special defense account. The next issue, the point four, it is just with regards to the NCACC. Um, remember, there were complaints about the system not being uh, up to standard in the sense that it's not being digitized and the arms corps has also um, uh, told them that they will be able to assist them to digitize the system. That is now for the pr approval of permits, uh, et cetera. Um, and then the next issue there, we said that we're going to follow up as to whether the amended um, uh, end user certificates regulations are actually now implemented and whether it's actually working because you will remember that in the past, uh, there were problems with that, and then they dealt with it, and they say they're gonna deal with it through diplomatic means, and we just have to check as to whether they are doing it or not. Um, the next point there, Chair, is just the key challenge that we're emerging, and it relates to what I've just said. And the first one um, is a challenge with regards to the, the, the funding of the project, specifically Ufaster Hotel Bayrou, uh, and also, against the background that the dire situation that prevails at the NEL, and we've read in the news currently that they're still struggling with problems there. The NCCACC, um, Chair, there were problems with regards to the way they were reporting and the suggestion was made that it should be more comparative and they should also give us some more economic analysis. And then as I said earlier, there was problems with the end user certificate and we just want to see how they're actually are implementing the amendments now. Um, Chair, something that we discuss now is the letters from the, the, the president, and that is the time is submissions and the powers of the Joint Standing Committee on Defense and Parliament. And I think it's a good idea if members maybe have a look at, 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 at the previous uh, legal opinions and how we should actually deal with that. Chair, another issue that we said that we should also look at is the deployment uh, or during deployments, the conduct of soldiers, the consequent mentioned uh, uh, management and the implementation of the new regulations. Um, we also asked the military ombud to come back to us, um, to come and report to us, you know, with regards to the investigations they've done. I think that thing has not been concluded and we still need to, to follow up on that. And the last one is just uh, a follow-up engagement with ENDIC and the defense industry around its sustainability. And then each uh, the last part in the highlighted section is the recommendations. Um, and it basically just relates to what I've just mentioned. And um, then, then the report just makes various recommendations as to what the committee can actually do. And the first one there is that 
the Nelland Armour should look at the viability of continuing with Project Ubeister, especially given the harmful impact a cancellation would have on the defense industry and the Nelland in particular. And then secondly, a follow-up meeting should be held with the two entities on the agreement and the way forward. With regards to the NCACC, uh, we just say that in the future, they should incorporate in the presentation an economic analysis and also a comparative analysis between the various uh, quarters as well as previous years. And then the next one there is, they should also in 21, indicate in his court reports to Parliament the dates and the number of meetings they've held to consider the export and import uh, uh, permits. Chair and members, remember there were concerns uh, around uh, when and how often the NCACC actually sit. Um, the industry had problems with that. And the suggestion was then made that we should ask them to come and tell us how many times they've met and the dates of those meetings. Um, the last one there, Chair, or the second last one is just that they must provide us with the feedback on the end user certificates and interpretation. With regards to the letters from the president, it's just with regards to the time years, uh, 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 that the office of the president should ensure the time years submission of the letter of the president on the employments uh, of members uh, on, of the SEA on various emissions. With regards to the deployments, it just relates to the ministers of the future issue a, con a code of conduct or guidelines that are tailored to a specific deployment. And I think that also came out of the judgment uh, 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 of the court with regards to this. Um, and that would be to regulate the conduct of members of the SNDF while in a specific deployment. Consular good management should be ensured in the, in the cases of misconduct. With regards to the military ombud, um, the committee should in consultation with the office consider a review of the Military Ombud Act with a view to enhance its independence, impartiality, impartiality and the effectiveness of the office. Remember, Chair, um, this also had to do with regards to, 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 to um, the recommendations um, that the office actually make, and then it is actually discretionary for the department to decide which recommendations they will implement or not. And then six day chair is just the engagement with the NDIC and the industry, and their recommendation is that the committee should draft a program of engagement with the relevant defense industry role players and other portfolio committees at parliament to facilitate the kind of support and assistance that we contribute to the economy and the defense capability. So the next uh, section just deal with uh, the, uh, uh, the departments and the entities falling un under the committee's portfolio. So uh, we can just uh, skip that because I think members are quite aware of that and we will deal with that again when we do the strategic uh, uh, planning session. Um, this day, Chair, did, uh, to confirm the mandate after the committee, it was established in terms of the constitution, the interim constitution 200 of 1993, and specifically then section 228, and is competent to investigate and make recommendations regarding the budget, the functioning, organizations, armaments, and armaments policy, morale, and a state of readiness, preparedness of the national defense, and to perform such other functions relating to parliamentary supervision of the force as may be prescribed by law. And then Chair, the next section 1.3, it just says um, how the MITI actually does its work. It considers uh, quarterly and annual reports of the NCACC. It considers letters from the president. Um, it conduct oversight business, and it also conducts workshops and symposia, and as well as having meetings uh, with various uh, uh, issues. And then Chair, the next section is just uh, about the purpose of the report. And uh, section two of them actually um, tells us about the statistics and the various meetings that we held. And we can see then in 2020, the committee had around 14 uh, meetings, three in the first term, three in the second term, and five in the third term, and then four in the, the fourth term. With regards to the oversight trips undertaken, uh, it was two. Um, I think they also count the one, the Lakotla also counted as one and the other one was then of the one to the borders. Um, there were no study tours. Um, and then also they, uh, on the next page, we see um, the referrals from the speaker and the chairperson. And those were basically uh, letters uh, from the president and also uh, then the NCACC reports. And then you can see in total we had about five. I say the next one is meetings that the committee held, and I'm, I'm going to skip that um, because later on we'll have a, a summary at a strategic session of all these meetings and, and, and what we've, we've done.
Um, Chair, um, the end point three, we're just saying that um, the committee also took a briefing to, from the parliamentary legal advisor and the legal opinion um, and the implications of the Colin Corsa judgment and defense uh, committees and parliament. And in the main chair, um, they basically said, you know, that, that, that we can do uh, uh, what any other uh, parliamentary committee can do. Um, and then if we want, for instance, to deep dive into a specific issue, conduct an investigation, we are allowed to do that. Um, the next section, Chair, is just relates to uh, legislation. And as we're all aware, we're actually not dealing with uh, legislation at all. Um, and then the oversight visits, uh, the two that we've, we've, we've mentioned, um, but we're gonna skip that, Chair. Um, because the first one was basically the the, the the hotla that we had, and the second one was then the oversight visit uh, to the borders. But Jay, I think the important part there is basically the challenges um, that we've picked up that emerge from these oversight uh, uh, visits. And the first first one is Jay, that the committee should request the auditor, auditor general for a full forensic investigation on all expenditure, progress, and consequent mentions on one military hospital refurbishment uh, between 2006 and 2015. Chair, we were there at the hospital at the, during our oversight visit, and we saw that very little progress had been made, and they mentioned a lot of uh, challenges, um, but I think it's something that we need to follow up, and maybe it will be useful to have this forensic investigation report from the AG uh, with regards to the expenditure. And then the next one is, is that uh, the committee also felt that the defense work for mission um, their roles will actually be increased to assist with repair, maintenance, and the restoration of DOD infrastructure. The next one, Chair, um, related to, 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 to the two above, um, is actually the option to decrease the reliance on outsourcing of medical services. And because uh, the hospital is not fully functional and all the, the theaters and so on are not functional, they are outsourcing a lot of the med medical services uh, at huge cost. Um, and, and, and I think they need to consider how they're going to actually uh, uh, try and, and reduce this. Uh, uh, but in the process, they will also have to um, recruit again, you know, some of the, the uh, specific skills or special skills that they had uh, uh, because they, they, they lost, because some of the, the, the specialists could not practice their skills at the hospital. The next one, Chair, is just the follow up on the progress to finalize the force structure and force design and the related HR action plans. Uh, something that we discussed yesterday, but I think um, if, if one goes back to, to the, the 2015 uh, defense review, it's actually the task of the chief of the uh, defense force to finalize the force structure and force design. And we do believe that is something that we need to, to follow up and it should actually be done as soon as possible because it will actually help to assist to address some of these HR issues. Uh, something that we mentioned earlier is the challenges around the SDA, the Special Defense Account, and the funding of projects. Um, another one that we also felt was very important that members also were very frustrated with when they heard about during the, the oversight visits about the slow pro procurement process and how long it actually takes to get some, some, some of the equipment, material, and other stuff that the, the, the soldiers actually need. So very frustrating, and the idea is uh, to invite Chief Block uh, uh, to come and address us on this issue. Uh, in line with, with that one, Chair, is also the living conditions of soldiers along the borders. Um, members are aware um, that the conditions they were staying under were not uh, uh, very well, uh, not good at all. And some of the buildings were dilapidated. They didn't have water. Um, they had to uh, transport over, over long distances and various other problems to be found there. Uh, Chair, we are aware um, that over the MTEF, around 225 million rand uh, um, has been set aside by National Treasury for the employment of technology as a force multipliers along the borders. And I think it is something that we, we need to follow up and see how it's actually being implemented. The next one, Chair, is the dais need to increase the number of subunits deployed along our, our borders. We all are aware that our borders are very porous and it's long distance that soldiers have to cover. And obviously they are struggling to do that. And, and, and there's a dire need to actually increase the number from 15 to at least 22. And I think that's a discussion that we need to have with National Treasury and all the other role players um, to see whether they can actually increase the number of subunits. Um, and something that was mentioned uh, during the various oversight visits uh, 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 along the borders was uh, uh, the representativity profile 
and sometimes the lack of, of, of female soldiers, especially in leadership positions, um, and that we want uh, regular feedback on the representativity profile. I'd say related to that is the issues that we feel that should be we follow up um, is like the like I said earlier is the forensic investigation uh, at one military hospital by uh, the AG to increase the role of defense work formation uh, uh, work formation uh, outsourcing of medical services the force structure force design the SDA challenges the slow procurement processes the living conditions the need to increase the number of subunits deployed and then also in regards to the representativity uh, profile of the department. Um, and then also the need to deploy uh, a force of multipliers. I'd say the next one, the study tours, as we have, we haven't undertaken any study tours and during the strategic planning session, uh, we will plan this and populate as to what we want to do over the next uh, three and a half years and where the committee wants to go, you know, to just to benchmark, you know, against international best practices. International agreements, uh, there were none during that period. Um, and then the obligations with regards to uh, uh, legislation conferred um, under committee, and it's basically uh, the letters uh, from the president that the committee has to consider. Chair, uh, there are nine. It is just a summary of the outstanding issues um, relating to the department and the entities. And the first thing we say internally that we need to conduct a strategic planning workshop a session. We couldn't do it in 2019 because uh, we started off in, 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 in July. Um, and then last year in 2020, we couldn't do it because of the pandemic. I tell you, yeah, it, it, it's just a, 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 a list that we've drafted up. Uh, the way we basically say the issues that we need to follow up, the relevant department, um, and what action should be taken. But me, most of these, or nearly all these issues have already been covered. Uh, as you can see, there is, is, is the, the database, Project um, Oofeister, um, the NEL challenges, the, the website. Um, and then Chair, there is the one that I haven't mentioned before. It is basically a report on the finalization of the court process on the theft of the assault rivals at uh, Littleton uh, military base. This is something that we need to follow up, Chair because I think it links to, to our oversight visits where we found that, that at some military bases, there are problems with security. We, for instance, took note of the theft of rifles, for instance, in Nainzai, and also at, 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 at Silvermine, where some of the equipment was, was stolen. So I think this is an issue that, that we need to, to, to follow up to. Um, we discussed the force design and force structure. Um, another issue that I haven't mentioned before, it is basically is the matters under investigation on fraudulent cases and complaints a lot quarterly. And there we just say uh, the committee needs to follow up on those issues. Uh, the digitization of the system of the NCACs, we have talked about that. Um, and then the discussion of national treasury and method related to compensation of, of, of employees. Uh, both committees are actually dealing with that. And yesterday we also certain extent uh, discuss uh, this issue. So as mentioned earlier, uh, with regards to the review of the Military Ombud Act, um, a lot has to do about the impartiality, independence, uh, and also then, you know, the enforceability of, of, of the recommendations. Um, the next one is just uh, about the, the complaints. A report of the Military Ombud and the written complaints and the allegation of misconduct of members of the during the state of disaster. And it's something that we just need to follow up and the military ombre maybe can come back and, and, and then report to us. Um, the next one I've mentioned is the AG with regards to the forensic investigation, the SDA challenges uh, I've mentioned before. And then something that I've also mentioned when we talked about the oversight visit and that is just that we need to meet to achieve logistics and national treasury by the end of March 21 to look at the frustration that was expressed in the delays in procuring urgently required, required uh, operational items. Chair, this is an issue that we felt is important. That's why we put also a date there to say that we need to discuss this with Chief Logistics and National Treasury uh, by that time. The next one, Chair, is that uh, uh, urgent engagement, something I haven't mentioned before, and that is basically engagement between DPWI 
um, Department of Public Works and Infrastructure, Department of Water and Sanitation, and the duty to plan for an upgrade under section headquarters uh, buildings along uh, the South African borders, and especially along uh, the borders uh, the Lumbombo, where we saw that there were huge problems with the infrastructure and the provision of water. And then something that I mentioned before is just with regards to the DOD, DOD's uh, presentation. So, um, this is just a, a, a table where we just say uh, what has been referred to us, what were the content of the referral, and what is the status. Uh, and, and this is basically a sort of checklist, um, you know, where we receive letters from, uh, from the, the president uh, to the speaker and the, uh, the chairperson of the NCOP, um, and we deal with it. Uh, but to come and report and say that we've dealt with it, we adopted it, and we've published it. In the case of, of, of the NCAC report, um, basically it just, uh, we confirm the, that we've adopted uh, the minutes of that specific meeting. So you can go down, Valiano. The end two April is just the letters that we've adopted. Um, 22 April, also another letter. Um, 25 June, there the NCAC uh, first quarterly report. Um, and then two July, um, we've uh, discussed another uh, a letter of employment. Uh, similarly, the 4 March, uh, the 2 April, letters that we've dealt with, the NCACC, and 1 September, also the NCACC uh, letters. Okay, um, coming to the end, um, these are just uh, some of the issues I go down below. That's important. 14 is not quite applicable to us, but the chair here in the end, we're just uh, making uh, some internal uh, uh, recommendations with regards to the functioning of the committee itself. Uh, and I think many of the members will relate uh, to the recommendations because it was actually raised by members as we went along. And then, chair, the first uh, recommendation there is basically just the clashes in the programs of the NA and the NCUP because it remains a problem. And this basically results in some members not being available for important meetings, oversight visits, and possible future uh, tours. And, and what we're saying is um, during the strategic planning session, we need to look at this and see how we can actually find a way of, of, of uh, addressing this. Um, because part of the problem is that if we do then meet on a Thursday morning, there's not time enough uh, before we have to break uh, to allow members uh, to attend other commitments. Um, the second one there is, Chair, is just with regards to the importance of a quorum at meetings, uh, which should be emphasized to ensure that decisions are supported by the majority of committee members. Um, because if we do not have a quorum, we can't uh, adopt the report or, or the minutes. Um, and especially if there are then uh, recommendations that we want to uh, refer to the departments, um, we actually want to do this as speedily as possible. Um, the next year is the adoption of especially reports of the committee should be prioritized given the need to serve in both houses for the recommendations to be action. And the last one there is just the follow up mechanism of the joint planning committee on defense, the recommendations to departments, entities, and other stakeholders should be prioritized. Just saying there that, that we need to find a, a, a system where we diligently follow up on our recommendations to. Uh, the departments and the entities to ensure um, that we don't just repeat it, uh, um, that issues don't become recurring, um, that we deal with the issue, they come back and they report to us, and then we, uh, then we move forward. So, uh, that is the annual report of the Giant Stone Committee on Defense for 2020. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, very comprehensive. Uh, Thank you for this uh, exercise. Uh, um, uh, 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 Peter and, 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 and the team. Uh, colleagues, the matter is now on, on the table. I can see Mr. Mare's hand. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Mare. Uh, thank you, Chair. I, I just want to say that maybe Peter and Valhalla and the team is not fair to us. You know, they do it so good that we can't criticize them. So, you know, we can't be critical of that. So, uh, so, so well done again. This is such, such a comprehensive thing. And 
I sometimes go through that and I see, you know, what did they, where did we miss something? Uh, and I must say, it is incredibly comprehensive and it's certainly assisting us. And this is part of the quality of, of our work under your guidance uh, and your chairmanship. So well done. Compliments to uh, Peter and Valerum and the team. Excellent, outstanding. I'm very proud of that work. Okay, that was the first comment. Any other comment, colleagues? I hear a voice, but I don't. Uh, it is Mali okay? Yeah, it's, it's not Mali I'm saying uh, uh, Mare represented us very well. Oh, I see. Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> thank you so much, uh, Tabo. Uh, Dennis, uh, sorry. Um, honor, thank, thank you so much, Mr. Mutle. Uh, Honorable uh, Raider. Uh, Dennis is also fine. Thank you, Chair. Yes, no, I just okay. want to uh, echo Mr. Maria's sentiments and say, yes, well done to the team. That's a good report. Thank you. You know, I, I need I need your that radio stay that radio. I mean, I went. I, I there were my dad had one that uh, <laughs> I would each time run to it. You know, after hours, you know, just to listen to that um, uh, what you call uh, that channel SW. Is it SW1? You yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. short wave, short wave. Short wave. <laughs> short wave. Yeah, short wave. The short and, wave, and, yes. And, yes. And, and, yes. Also, and also the, the, the radio from, from Lorenzo Marx in those days. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I, I, so the leadership was actually broadcasting from there, and you could hear <laughs> and from those countries, and you could hear, you know, slightly. You know, of course, there was yeah. this corruption yeah. uh, to ensure that we <laughs> yeah. should not hear anything. Yeah, okay, thank you so much. still works. We, 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 we play it, it from time the valves still take a few minutes to warm up i'm sure you remember that but let the valve oh, yeah. it works <laughs> good here. so yeah it was a present to my parents on their wedding day oh man man man, man. it's a yeah. Uh, yeah good i like it i like it very much my my dad's one Chairperson in white, do you allow uh, Honorable Mutle to push me off your road? Uh, oh, man. I thought he was speaking on your behalf. I don't know the alliance that you form <laughs> when you are out there, you know? <laughs> no, he's pushing me off the road. <laughs> All right. So I agree with him, man. That uh, Mr. Mara represented, represented us very well. All right, colleagues. Uh, the, I have only one uh, exception, uh, colleagues. I think you would all agree with me. Mr. Raider pointed it out. Uh, I can't remember who else. The DMV matters. Um, that uh, I think there is one or two that uh, the document says we must follow uh, upon them. Um, but I have no objection leaving it there. And in the hope that um, we'll swap, we'll take the issues to the other side, uh, to the, the to the portfolio committee. Yeah. Yeah. We can still keep it there for for tracking yeah. purposes. Yeah. yeah. But follow up will happen in yeah. in another committee. Agreed. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. So okay. So that report, colleagues, is um, uh, uh, accepted, and. Uh, Thank you very much for, 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 for this exercise. Colleagues, I think we've come to, to the end of the meeting. The time now yeah. is uh, 22 to 8. Yeah. Um, was there anything that I'm leaving out, Pat? Is there anything that I'm leaving out? No, Chair. I'm not leaving out anything. Colleagues, thank you very much for your time and uh, have a great um, a weekend. I uh, will not see each other until uh, the following uh, week. Uh, the situation out there is still very tough, and we are grateful that we now have a vaccine, but uh, it's going to take a bit of time to reach me, and um, because I'm not part of uh, the first the group to be prioritized, and, uh, and possibly the second group, it will only cover me in the in the that um, uh, are you not 60 are you not 60 yet no, not as yet I, I wish i could <laughs> i wish i was you know yeah. and, uh, because i would i would, I would be entitled uh, at least in the yeah. second the second like lot. me like uh, me. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Thank, you, thank you very much for your time thank we you, have,
the wonderful team. Uh, much appreciated. Thank you so much. Colleagues, thanks. Okay, bye. Thank okay. you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Good, much appreciated. Good night. Thank you. 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 Thank